G'day, hi and welcome. All right, so I'm in the midst of making room for my new drum kit. It is a Mapex Armory. Uh, this is the Anaconda Burst for a four piece uh, shell pack. And then I bought the Thomas snare separate. So this is one of those shell packs that does not come with a snare, but this is also one of the, according to the guy at Long and McQuaid, you might, uh, Mapex might only make like say 300 of these kits so they're kind of they're going to be kind of rare uh it's, i like the black hardware i don't i think that's going to be chrome hardware but whatever uh later on i'm probably going to have as i build on to this thing i'm probably going to have uh, a cage anyway so uh but uh, i bought this kit for my first kit now here's my drumming experience okay i'm 50 years old uh when i was in high school 14 15 years old uh, 13, 14, 15, whatever it was that many years ago, I, uh, basically took a music class and half the semester, uh, or one semester I took the bass and as of tomorrow, uh, that'd be March. Uh, so I'm going to be doing my one year bass review uh, as well. So I took the bass learned a little bit of sheet music, whatever. And for the second half of the semester, I was on the drums. So learned a little bit of sheet music uh, or, you know, like how to read the, the music and stuff like that. Learned a couple of beats. It was like, you know, brass band stuff. You know, there were saxophones and trumpets and tubas. And uh, the, the people that were really bad ended up on the xylophone. I know how to play the xylophone really well now. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, that was kind of my introductory to drums. So I never played a lot of drums because uh, I couldn't take the drum kit home from school. I was able to take a bass home from school, but not, not the drum kit. Uh, just, and it, I don't know how the hell we would have got it on the, I know I did have a, this is the second drum kit that's ever been in this room. One of my first drummers, he left his drum kit here for about a week back in the, you know, late eighties, early nineties. And I, I didn't really play it a lot, but I played it a little bit. I can't remember what it was, if it was Westbury's or a Pearl kit. I, I, do, I remember they were white and I've got pictures of them in, of them in this room. That's the only reason why I remember there was a drum kit here in here at one point, but I only had it for maybe a week, two weeks tops. I just, cause it was pain in the ass for him to lug it. <laughs> like we literally brought that thing home on the school bus. I don't know how we, I don't know how we even got the bass drum through the, the school bus door. Uh, <laughs> you know that or his parents dropped it off one or the other uh so however it got here it got here and then after that i never really played drums again until say 92 to 95 uh i had a friend i used to stay at his place all the time in the city and he bought a drum kit he had a bass and drum kit and guitars there and and anyway uh he bought a westbury uh you know beginner kit or whatever back in the time and, you know, I jump on it for four or five songs and then the, you know, I'd pick up the guitar again and he'd jump on it for four or five songs and then his cousin would jump on it for four or five songs and I'd grab the bass or whatever. And we do that. And then my actual dr uh, drummer at that time, Scott, he would, you know, he was the only guy that was actually a drummer out of all of us and whatever. So hacked around on it on stage. I may have played drums maybe once or twice on stage couldn't if i did two songs if i did three songs i can't even remember uh so that's my drumming experience per se that said i bought a, a pair of drumsticks about three years ago and i've been kind of like uh, practicing stuff so uh, i'm going to tell you my approach of how uh i'm learning right now and uh, like when i jump on this for the first time it's going to sound pretty okay for a beginner um, uh, so I'm not going to be completely lost. It's not like I don't know anything about the drums whatsoever, but that's, you know, I'll explain that as I go, because I learned a lot from my old drummer, you know, shopping for cymbals and stuff like that. So one thing I learned from my old drummer was you buy cheap stuff, you get cheap stuff and you, it breaks, right? Drum kits are a lot of maintenance. 
Uh, they're not outrageous, but you know, you got, you got to take care of them, right? Now this drum kit will probably be played live once in a while, but I mainly bought it for recording uh, because I had a hell of a time getting this thing into my Honda Civic. It was, uh, if this would have been a five piece kit, uh, I would be leaving a Tom at the store. <laughs> like I barely got that uh, into the back seat. This was sitting in the front seat. It just enough to close the door. I didn't like that at all, especially with, you know, you know I, I don't know why I didn't bring towels with or uh, blankets with me or whatever, but I got home without scratches. So that was good. So anyway, I was like, I was going to buy just a cheap kit. At first I was going to buy an electric kit and just a, just a cheap one. And then I was like, yeah, but then I'll have it and then I'll get good at it. And then it'll be like, I have to sell the, the cheap kit at some point. Uh, or like what usually happens is you buy a new kit like something like this is your second or third kit. And then you got these other, all this hardware and these other kits just sitting there waiting to get sold. And it seems like it, you know, it seems like once you buy something, it's like a white elephant, it's yours. You know what I mean? And so if you're going to buy something that you have to stick with for the next 10 years, 20 years, whatever, I'd rather just, you know, spend the money now. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you the money uh, in, into this kit, uh, you know, as, as we go. But the big one is, is that, um, it's just, I've learned over years, there's no point in buying a whole bunch of cheap things. You, you know what I mean? Like it, it, you just buy what you is going to get the job done. Sure. You know, get the best bang for the bucks, but buy something that's going to do that. You, you're not going to want to upgrade. And I'll show you the proof of concept here. This mess of boogie. Okay. So I bought this when I was 15 years old. And I have yet to hear another cabinet that impresses me as much as this one. I'm not saying they're, they're, they don't exist, but if this is the only 4x12 I ever buy in my life, need not want. I am so happy with this thing. Bought it once. You know what I mean? I didn't buy five, you know, a cheap one and then, okay, I'll buy a cheap one and upgrade it and spend more money. And then you're still not happy with it where it's like you try it. When I tried that thing in the store, I knew it was like, okay, that's a keeper. Same thing with this. So this kit is a... Uh, 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 birch maple birch, uh, seven and a half millimeters, six ply, or is it seven ply? Yeah, seven and a half uh, millimeter, six ply, birch maple birch, uh, anaconda burst. I know, like, right now you can't really see it very well, but uh, it's just absolutely stunningly gorgeous. When the light hits it, oh my god, it's just like drool. If it was a girl, I'd marry it. <laughs> You know, it's a very, very, very beautiful kit. So aesthetically, you know, like, okay, blue's my favorite color, but this Anaconda Burst, boy, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? You just can't beat it. It's just, you know, like, I, it's a veneer uh, over top of it. Um, but look at those green. Look at that green. Like, I don't know if the camera's even coming close to picking up any of that, but it's just, I love wood green. Uh, same like my guitars, you can see, it's hard to see in here, but you get light on them, you can see the wood green. You know, wooden instruments shouldn't be just, okay, except for the, the black hole back here, that's just solid black. Uh, but that's a metal guitar, you know. That's the Doom guitar, because it's an H string. Uh, but, you know, when you have, like, something that's really aesthetically pleasing to look at like that, uh, you know, you don't want to upgrade, you know what I mean? And my whole philosophy is not to spend $100, uh, don't spend $100 to save 10, meaning, how am I doing for time here? Okay, I'll wrap this one up pretty cool, uh, quick, because I, I do got to get this thing put together. Um, if you go and you buy the cheapest kit, okay? Now, if you're 20 years old, it doesn't matter. You can live with that kit for 10 years and then, you know, piece together something like this over that time. If you're, you know, if you're hard on cash, right? Or maybe three or four years later, you, you go at this. Uh, when you're 50, it's like, you know, I might not have, uh, <laughs> you know, in 10 years, I might not want to play the drums. Well, I doubt it, but uh, I'll play music until I can't, you know what I mean? But uh, why buy the beginner kit when you know it's something you're going to stick with? Um and it's not even just about me playing them. Like when I go into the studio in the future and I'm not no longer just getting ideas down, I mean, I'm going to produce some okay stuff with this, but I know if I take this to a studio um, and I hire an actual session drummer, he's going to make this thing sound a hundred million times better than I can. But that recording is going to be forever, right? So it's not going to be a cheap drum kit uh, that sounds okay, 
it's going to be a, an excellent drum kit that sounds really, really good. So this is not the most high-end drum kit of the Mapex line. It's a, the Armory line is, is like the third from the top. Uh, so it goes um, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Tornado. Then it goes to the Venus, which is a little bit better than the Tornado hardware-wise and, and whatever. Uh, then you go to the Mars series, which it was between the Armory series and the Mars series. And you got the Mars series, and then after the uh, Mars series, um, you get the Armory series. Uh, main difference between the Armory and the Mars is... Uh, the Armory's, uh, the Mars is probably just as good. It's it's birch maple, bir or it's solid birch, I think. Uh, where in the Armory, you get the hybrid stuff, birch maple birch. Um, and you get, um, what you call it, uh, way more. The, the colors in the Mars line is, I think, the best looking drums. If you're into reds, if you're into blues, you're into greens, whatever, there's something there for you. Like, just go look at them. They're, they're the, like, Pearl doesn't make anything anywhere near as beautiful aesthetically. Uh, I know beauty's in the high, high level, but fancy-wise. Uh, even DW, like, I, I mean, I know I'm about to, like, get slagged here for what I'm about to say, but there was nothing that I saw in the DW line that looks as gorgeous as this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's just, okay, it might be a veneer, I get that, but uh, I know DW's is, is like, that's the, that's the gold standard, right? Um, and it doesn't mean those other drums aren't good. I'm just saying, if you want fancy, look at the Mapex uh, lines. And then you've got after the Armory series, which there, I did want the Studio Ease, you have the Fusion, the Studio Ease, and then you've got, uh, you know, like the rock kit like this. Like this, you know, like the, the Thunder of Zeus comes out of that thing. That's the, you know, it's a 22-inch bass drum. It's, 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 it's a rock drum, right? Um, then after that, you have the, the Saturn, and then you have the Jupiter line, I think, is the top one from Apex. So I got somewhere in the middle. Uh, uh, the main thing with the Saturn and the Jupiter is that they have the, uh, what you call it, uh, walnut shell 